All of these animations were done entirely inside of After Effects. They are pretty easy to make and I'm gonna teach you guys how to create them. And I will also show you guys some new features that will blow your mind away. So let's start with the first animation. So the first thing you'll have to do is simply create a new solid. Make sure that the solid is black. This will be our background. Make sure to convert it into 3D. Now simply go into two views and make sure that you are in custom view one. Now what you can do is simply push the background back and simply click on S to pull out the scale option and scale it all the way up like that. So I'll create a 3D camera. So right click right there, click on new and then click on camera. Now simply click on OK. Now I will proceed to create a shape. So I'll simply select this shape right there and I'm going to select the square and I'm simply going to draw it inside of my composition like that. Now I'll simply go to layers, transform, and then I'll simply click on center the anchor point. Now what I'm going to do is simply center my shape into the center of my composition like that. Now let's make the square 3D. So just make sure that your 3D renderer is in advanced 3D. Now we can convert the shape into a 3D layer and simply go to the geometry option and you can actually extrude your shape. So just like that, you have a real 3D inside of After Effects. This is actually crazy. Now what I'm going to do is simply center the anchor point like that. And I'm simply going to push it towards the shape like so. Now that everything is set up, what you can do is simply rotate your shape to make it into a pillar. So just make a 90 degrees rotation like that and push it to the left. Now you can click on S to pull out the scale option. Make sure to unlink the scale options by clicking on a chain. And what you can do is simply make the pillar a little bit skinnier to your liking. Now simply position it correctly. Duplicate the pillar like so. Now what you can do is simply push it to the right. Now that you have two pillars, you can select those two and simply copy and paste them to make two new pillars and just do that all over again to have multiple pillars. So as you can see now, I'm going to select all four of them, duplicate them and simply push them back like that. And I'm simply going to do it again until I'm satisfied with the amount of pillars that I have. So as you can see, I created a lot of pillars and it was pretty quick to do and I think it's enough. So what I'm going to do is simply create a new solid. I'm going to put it dark gray. This is going to be our floor and our ceiling. So I'll simply click on OK. Now I'll simply convert it into 3D automatically and I'll simply rotate it into 90 degrees so it can make a floor. So I'll push it down like that. And I'll simply pull out the scale option, unlink it by clicking on the chain and I'll simply stretch it like that. Now I'll simply duplicate the layer now I'll simply put the ceiling above the pillars. So I'll just take this arrow right there and drag it up like this. Now this is our ceiling. Now what I'm going to do is simply create a new light. So click on new and click on light. Make sure this is a point light. So as you may see, the whole scene just changed. Now what you can do is simply push the light a little bit further just so that the pillars are a little bit more visible. Okay, so I think I like it like that. Now what I'm going to do is simply link the lights to the camera like that. And this will ensure that the light will follow the path of the camera. So now I'll just drag my camera all the way up like that, just for clarity's sake. Now what I'm going to do is simply go at the first frame, create a new keyframe and go to the last frame. And now at the last frame, I'm simply going to push the Z axis. And just like that, it will look like the camera is going through the hallway. So I'll just have to push it forward like this to the end of my tunnel. So I'll just push it like that a lot until I reach the end of the tunnel. Now what I'm going to do is simply click on R. Now I'll simply alt click on orientation and I'll simply put a wiggle expression to make it seem like the camera is shaky and it will add a, a bit of realism to the scene. Now simply control A to select everything and control shift C to pre-compose it. Now simply click on OK. Now what I'm going to do is simply add some post processing effects like I'm going to add some grain. I'll simply apply it, put, put the value up and now what I'm going to do is simply add a little glow effect, mine is from production crate and here's the final product, it was pretty easy and quick to do. Now let's start by doing the second animation. So first thing first, I'll create a new solid, now I'll simply pick a color. I'm going to pick pink personally because it matches the aesthetic of what I'm going to do. Now I'll click on OK. Now what I'm going to do is simply import my assets inside of my composition. 
So I'll simply import the computer right there and I'll simply center it just by putting the anchor point at the center of the image. And I'm simply gonna center it into my composition like that. Now I'm simply gonna put the other assets and as you can see, they are too big. So I'm gonna simply scale them down so they can fit into the composition. And I'm gonna do that with all of the assets that I just imported. Now what I'm gonna do is simply position all of my assets into my composition. I'll simply throw them around like that. Now I will use the 3D5 Pro plugin and it allows you to turn any composition into a 3D composition. So as you can see, I just click one button and everything got turned into 3D and I can also control the 3D camera inside of the scene. So if you're interested, the link of the plugin will be in the description. And now I'll simply rotate my objects and make them the way I want them to be or just for a little bit of customization. So I will quickly do that with all of the assets because it really gives off a really creative vibe and I think it matches with the aesthetic. So I'll simply push this one towards the camera. So what I'm gonna do is pull out the position by clicking on P and push the Z axis towards the camera. Now what I'm gonna do is simply animate the 3D camera. So I'll click on P. At the first frame, I'm gonna add a keyframe. Then I'm gonna go a few frames forward and I'm gonna go back to the first keyframe and I'll simply push the camera towards the computer. Now I'll simply adjust it so it can come out of the screen like that and we'll leave the second keyframe alone and as you can see we already have a cool animation now what i'm going to do is simply select the two keyframes click on the f9 and i'll simply go into the graph editor and i'm going to edit my graph so it can be to my liking now as you can see the 3d5 plugin has a shake option so i'm simply going to click it to generate a realistic shake now i will simply select everything to pre-comp them all now what i'm going to do is simply add some post-processing effects so this time i will add a, a posterized time effect and this will add a lot more to the aesthetic of the animation so just apply it right there and i think i'll put mine to 15 frames and as you can see the change is really prominent so what i'm going to do now is simply add a grain effect so i'll simply search for it right there i'm simply going to apply it to the pre-composition i'll click around with the settings put the final output to the final render thing and simply put the amount up a little bit. And I'm simply gonna add a posterize effect to add this vintage vibe that I'm looking for. And now as you can see, the whole animation has a vintage vibe like I wanted. Now I'm simply gonna go back to the main composition and I'm gonna simply enable motion blur on every layers. Now, as you can see, the animation is completely done and super clean. This animation was really quick to do thanks to the 3D5 Pro plugin. It saved us a lot of time. already at the third animation so now what you're gonna have to do is simply create a new solid i'll keep it white now what i'm gonna do is simply put a gradient into it i'm gonna put a radial gradient and i'm simply gonna switch the black to red because i like the red and white combo convert this layer into a 3d layer switch to two views now you can push the background all the way to the back and you can also scale it up so it can fit into the composition now you simply can switch to one view if you like it more like that now what I'm going to do is simply create a new text. So I'm simply going to write subscribe because, you know, and while still being in the text layer on a shape tool and simply create a circle like that. Now what you're going to have to do is simply click on text, path option, go on path and click on mask one. And this is going to wrap your text around the circle shape. Click on layer up there. Now what you're going to have to do is simply click on transform and click on center the anchor point. Now you can simply click on that tool right there and simply put the anchor point at the middle of the circle. This will avoid us a lot of problems in the future. Now what you can do is simply complete your text. I'm simply gonna copy and paste the same word all over again. And for my case, the text is overlapping. So what I'm gonna do is simply go on the text editor right there and I'm gonna simply stretch it out like that. I'm gonna click on animate and click on enable per 3D character. And I'm simply going to go on animate again and click on rotation. Now the X rotation has to be minus 90 degrees and the Y and Z rotation has to be 180 degrees. Now what you can do is simply rotate your text to make it visible to the camera. So simply rotate it like this. Now what you're going to have to do is simply check if your 3D renderer is in advanced 3D because it will be really important for the rest of the animation. Now on the text option, you're gonna have to click on geometry option and put the extrusion depth up. Now go to the shape tool, make sure it is a circular shape, go to fill and enable the fill. 
and make sure to add some stroke and you can also change the color of the stroke to your liking now you can simply import your circle make sure to center it into the composition so i'm simply gonna put it at the center right there what i'm gonna do now is simply put more stroke now i'm gonna convert it into a 3d layer and i'm simply gonna do the same exact thing that i did earlier i'm gonna pull out the geometry options and i'm gonna extrude the depth now what i'm gonna do is simply rotate it and to make sure that it's at the same rotation of the text what i'm gonna do is simply pull out the value of the rotation of the text and make sure that i write the same value inside of the circles layer now that it is now that we're done with that i'm simply gonna center it so it can really match my text and i'll simply make sure to parent the text to the shape layer and while selecting the shape layer what i'm going to do is simply go to layer i'm going to go to position and then what i'm going to do is simply click on center the anchor point so the rotation can be clean now what i'm going to do is simply click on r and go to the z axis and i'm simply going to create a rotation now what i'm going to do is simply duplicate both of the text in the band and i'll simply put the duplicate up like that and I'll simply do the same exact thing, but instead of putting it up, I'm simply going to put it down like that. And this will make me three bands. And what I'm going to do now is simply select everything and pre-compose it all. So simply click on OK. Now I'm simply going to add some post-processing effects. So I think first I'll add a brightness and contrast effect because the animation is way too bright and I'm just trying to make it darker a little bit. So I'm simply going to put the brightness down like that now that i'm happy with my brightness and contrast i'm simply gonna add a grain effect like usual i'm simply gonna play around with the settings make sure that the output is in render mode now i'm simply gonna add a glow effect and just like that the third animation is done just let me know in the comments if you know about the extrude depth option that you could do in after effects and if you didn't i'm glad i could teach you something new today now we'll go to the fourth animation which will be a little bit more simple Now we're back for the fourth animation, really simple. What I'm gonna do is simply import all of my assets and I'm simply gonna link two of these cords to one cord so that it's easier for me to move them all around at the same time. Now what I'm gonna do is simply position each one of them. And when I place them, I'm gonna ensure that they stand on the same line so it doesn't look uneven. And as you can see, there's one slot left. So what I'm gonna do is simply duplicate one of the cords and I'm simply gonna link it back to the main cord that, uh, that is the parent to the other cords and I'm simply gonna position the new cord to the missing slot. Now I'm simply gonna search for an effect called motion tile and I'm gonna apply it to one of these cords and what I'm gonna do is simply play around with a Y axis and I'm simply gonna animate it. So I'll put a, a keyframe at the first frame and then one at the last frame and at the last frame I'll start animating. Now what I'm gonna do is simply copy this effect into the other layers. So I'll simply do that to the other cords and now as you can see they, they're kind of moving together so i'm just gonna make some adjustments to create a little bit more variation just by changing the value of the keyframes so i'm gonna do it for the second chord like that i'm gonna target the third chord and i'm gonna do the same okay and i'm gonna do the same for the fourth chord and as you can see they're not moving together no more now what i'm gonna do is simply turn them all into a 3d layer now i'll simply copy and pass them now for the duplicates, I'm simply going to rotate them to create a floor, basically. So I'm simply going to rotate them like that. And I'm simply going to put it down like so. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is simply scale it up. Still by scaling the main chord because the other chords are child to the main chord. Okay, now I'll simply position it correctly so it can fit into the composition. And as you can see, you already have a cool animation. So I'm going to pre-comp everything and I'm going to add some post-processing effects. So I'm simply going to put an invert effect. So I'll simply apply it to the composition. Now what I'm going to do, you already know, I'm going to add some grain effect again. And I'll simply tweak around with the settings. And for the final touch, I'll add a bit of glow from production crate. And the fourth animation is basically done. It was super easy, super simple. I think it's one of the easiest in the list, but the fifth one is the craziest one, but also the easiest one to do. Last but not least, 
the fifth animation, the abstract one. So what I'm going to do is simply create a new shape layer and I'll make sure to put it at the center like that. Now what I'm going to do is simply put the four gradient effect into it. I'll simply um, center the points together so that the colors can look a little bit more vibrant. Now what you can do is simply change the color to your liking. I'm simply going to change it to purple like that or blue. Now what I'm going to do is simply now I'll, I will simply select my shape layer. I'm going to click on the pin tool and I'm going to add some pins all around the shape circle. And once this is done, what you can do is simply make sure to move around all of these pins to make something really abstract and trippy. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, as you can see, it really it really gets really trippy real fast so it's pretty easy to do right now to the layer tab you're gonna have to click on you and now you will see all of the points you will simply alt click on the clock of each of them and add a wiggle expression i'm gonna simply add a 1, 1, 200 expression and it's gonna make sure that the point is moving on its own and i'm simply gonna do this for the rest of the points and as you can see to go faster i only copy and paste the wiggle expression and i'm simply gonna paste it into all of the other clocks Now that this is done, what you can do is simply do the same, but for the color. So you'll simply have to select all of these clocks right there. Now click on U and simply do the same. Add a wiggle expressions to all of the colors. And as you can see, we got an abstract shape that switches colors on its own. So what there is to do now is simply pre-comp the shape. And now what I'm going to do is simply add a cool looking text. So I'll simply put the text of my choice right there. And I'm going to change the mode of the text. I'm going to put it in difference so it can look cooler. Now what I'm going to do is simply pre-comp everything again. And I'm going to add some post-processing effects. You simply click on OK. And by now, you already know that I'm going to add some grain to the effect. So I'll simply select it and then put it in the composition like that. I'm going to play around with the settings. And now to top it all off, I'm simply going to add a glow effect so it can look a little bit cooler and better. Now, the fifth animation is basically done. As you can see, all of the five animations were pretty easy to do and they're super, super clean to see. And to make sure to not miss any of my videos, make sure to enable the notification bell and I'll see you later.